Should we talk about the ACLU? Yeah. Let's I'm do it. About sure. That. Let's do it. Let's do this. Why not? So the American Civil Liberties Union, I used to be a big fan. Now they're basically just the anti-Civil Liberties Union. And I'll tell you why. But first, let me show you this story. This is from NBC News, picked up by Yahoo. ACLU sues Betsy DeVos over new campus sexual assault rules. Let's read a little bit, give you the context. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos revised federal guidelines on how sexual assault allegations should be handled on college and K-12 campuses is the target of a federal lawsuit filed Thursday, claiming the changes would inflict significant harm on victims and dramatically undermine their civil rights. The suit filed on behalf of four advocacy groups for sexual assault survivors, including Know Your Nine, Girls for Gender Equity, is the first, uh, and Girls for Gender Equity, is the first that attempts to block the Department of Education's new provisions before they go into effect on August 14th. The rules championed by DeVos effectively bolster the rights of due process for those accused of assault and harassment, allowing for live hearings and cross-examinations. It's what agency officials say was lacking under the Obama administration to protect all students under Title IX, a 1972 law that prohibits gender discrimination, including sexual assault at schools. Quote, this new federal effort, effort to weaken Title IX makes it more difficult for victims of uh, harassment or sexual assault to continue their educations and needlessly comes amid a global pandemic, according to the suit which was filed in U.S. District Court in Maryland by the American Civil Liberties Union mm. and the New York-based law firm Strook and Strook and Levon, LLP. The suit names DeVos, the Education Department, and Kenneth Marcus, the agency's Assistant Secretary of Civil Rights. The department did not immediately respond to a request for comment about the complaint. So let me just stop right here and break this down simply for you. Even NBC News says under Title IX, they needed more due process, live hearings and cross-examinations. Agency officials said this was lacking. Why is the ACLU seeking, seeking to take away due process from the accused? I, I'm kind of shocked. This is something that uh, DeVos is, I'm actually okay with. I know. Like and a lot oh, of people have been. I, I agree with this. So let, let me this give you some. Is, this is good. Why well, are they fighting it? Well, let's, let me give you some context. Right? Okay, go ahead. Title IX is an anti discrimination provision okay. that's been used. So basically, you know, uh, feminists have said if a woman is assaulted or harassed, then mm -hmm. it's unfair because the, if the universities don't go after these individuals, it's discrimination. Okay. What's ended up happening is a lot of these universities don't care about due process. Right. They're not a legal court. So they operate under what's called a preponderance of evidence. If a woman accuses you, they ask you what happened. And if you say something like, well, we were, you know, drinking and hanging out at my apartment, they'll say, oh, good enough for us. Yep. You admit you were there and she said it happened. You're expelled. Due process would be, I would like to cross-examine, you know, confront my accuser, yeah. things that you normally would get in a, in the, in, in the in, court, yeah. in, under English common, English common law. And, mm -hmm. you know, with the Fifth Amendment, we have a right to real due process. That doesn't exist. Betsy DeVos is trying to give the same rights at universities that we get in a court of law. That makes sense. To, to a me. certain degree, right? Okay. Well, it does. If some woman comes out and says, this man assaulted me, well, do we destroy his life on your word? We need evidence. That literally happened to my friend. Right. Yeah. So Betsy DeVos wants to, to, to enact these, these rule changes and bolster. The ACLU is arguing that violates the civil rights of the women. See How? That? But think about the logic there. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It's, they, look, man. Everyone has equal rights. Then it's just equal rights. When's the ACLU gonna 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 file suit to abolish the Fifth Amendment? Then, right. It's not fair that the accused get to confront their accuser. That's violating their civil rights. What? Nope. So you no can reason. just accuse, and then that they just trust that and throw yep. the guy in prison. They've done it. I know they, they have. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know about like Mattress Girl? Yeah, I think we talked about Emma it. Solkowitz. Yeah, and then she shifted, right? Now she's yeah, like conservative right. Or but something. apparently, like when she accused this guy, there were text messages showing that she was like, not, like it was not true what what she claimed. What she was saying. Yeah. She was begging him. She was messaging him for you know for years, saying I love you and stuff like that. And mm. then it was like two years later she accused him or something. Mm. I, I'm probably getting the details wrong, but there are a lot of questionable you know storylines. Yep. Uh, uh, questionable bits of evidence. So it would make sense that we, we make sure we protect the innocent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, without these rules, you're not protecting the innocent. You empower exploitation. Exactly. Why would the ACLU it's seek to uh, uh, oppose this? I don't know. That doesn't I, make I any can, sense. I can tell you why. Go ahead, please. Enlighten me. So for those, I, I think we, we may have talked about the story, but I'll, I'll tell you guys the story. 
the ACLU famously defended the KKK in Skokie, Illinois. We talked about this recently, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. And that was, they, they were very much liberal. Like, we believe in liberty and freedom, and we're going to stand up for the right to free speech. I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Okay. And back then, liberals cheered for it. Yeah. That's why today, the left is no longer liberal. It's yeah. the easiest way to explain it. If anyone ever says to you that, you know, they're liberals or whatever, ask them about defending the right to free speech of the Klan. Yeah. Because that's what liberals used to do. That's what they still do. The left today is not liberal. Liberals have left. And the ACLU has abandoned all liberal principles for money. So the ACLU uh, fought against Donald Trump's travel ban. Okay. He, he was, you know, this ban in the seven countries. And they immediately gained a whole bunch of leftist donors. It was a, it was a windfall to right. how much cash they made. When they then defended the right to free speech of Unite the Right in Charlottesville, they got attacked for it and immediately bent the knee saying, please don't take our money away. Yeah. We would be very upset if we lost our money. They got a taste of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now they're the anti-civil liberties union. They don't defend free speech. They have backpedaled. And now they're actively seeking to take away civil rights. That's ridiculous. As the anti-civil liberties union. It's gross, man. And, and, yeah, and, and it, it bugs me I out agree. because I once, I worked for a company where we fundraised for the ACLU. I was very proud. Yeah. I was like, dude, the ACLU is ACLU's awesome. I remember I was in Chicago we were doing street canvassing okay. and I, and I was fundraising to one guy and he was like, apparent, like you, you stop people in the street, you wave like, you know, Hey, we, so we would ask, like, do you have a minute to talk about defending civil rights? Yeah. And a lot of people would hear these stories. And then I remember talking to one guy who said, you know, that like they very famously defended the, the, the KKK who like came up and they marched through a Jewish neighborhood. And I was like, I absolutely didn't know that. And he was like, and you don't care. And I was like, I don't like these people. Yeah. I don't like the message they bring. Yeah, I don't agree with what they're but saying. Is, but, but we have a First Amendment in this country. And so you have to recognize that, you know, dictators love the idea that they can infringe upon the rights of one, use it as a pretext, because then they can take away the rights of all. Yeah. And the guy was like, I completely agree. He's like, I love what they do. Yep. Man, I wonder what, what these, you know, old school liberals think now and how many of them sold their values out. Yeah. Think about like, you know, uh, I was talking to somebody last, uh, I think it was like a year or two ago about this shift. Mm -hmm. And I was told that employees there, like the people who work there, like they know. Yeah. They know they've sold their souls. They know it's gotten bad. Mm -hmm. They're no longer fighting for civil rights. I think that's the gist of the story. Oh, there's, uh, there's a little bit more. Let's read a little bit more here just to give the, uh, there's actually a lot more. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know. I don't want to get into too much of the nitty gritty because, but they say DeVos last week denied that the final rule would discourage victims from coming forward to report abuse and instead allows for schools to be more balanced in how they review claims rather than through what she called a kangaroo court approach. We can continue to combat misconduct without abandoning our core value of fairness, presumption of innocence, and due process. How schools should address sexual assault comes amid the larger Me Too movement, focusing on claims of misconduct that might otherwise go ignored. Schools that fail to adhere to Title IX requirements risk the loss of federal funding. So I'll tell you what, man. I think we all saw where the Me Too movement went, and it was predictable for a lot of people. Yeah. The moment it came out for Biden, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't mean against us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, it's ridiculous. Now you get uh, uh, Vice President Creepy Hands, <laughs> and they they don't care. Creepy Hands, man. Like, yeah, this this is something that we needed for my. So I, I mentioned my friend. A lot of people are making jokes about who my friend was. I'm I'm just gonna tell the story. Like when I was in high school, one of my good friends was dating this girl, and he broke up with her. And it was just like, as people do, they break up. And like three days later, she was freaking out at him in school, like yelling at him, you know, screaming, like, you know, emotion, just emotions. And then she just claimed, you know, a couple days after that, that he raped her and he went to prison for two years. And then after about like a year and a half two two years later, well, while he was in prison, she she said to like a, a doctor or someone that look I feel really guilty I said this when I was younger I was emotional I don't love him anymore I don't feel the same way he didn't rape me I was just mad at him and it was like what and then the courts found out and they released him and he lost two years of his life because the, he didn't there was no questions asked he was just put in prison and they just believed what she said and it was it's ridiculous Would because you, this kind of thing didn't exist and you also got to think about what it looks like on a resume or your life history when there's a yeah, two-year gap. Exactly. What oh, happened? Where, where were you? you? Oh, I was in prison for rape. And it's like, yep. how does that look? You know, that's But terrible. I was innocent, trust me. And, and he was. He was innocent. Have you seen the movie? But that's not changing his record. Have you seen the movie? Well, the it's probably expunged. Who knows? I don't know right. how, how it works. Have you seen The Life of David Gale? 
I have, yeah. Kevin Spacey movie, no, no, yeah, nonetheless. That's Ooh. true. Yeah, creepy. Right? I haven't seen it in a long time. I know he's in prison or something. No, no, he's not in prison. Oh wait, I don't remember. Someone's in jail. No, right? the guys, the guys who accused him mysteriously died. Wait, so, say it again. The guys who accused <laughs> Kevin Spacey mysteriously died. Oh, ah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. How much, was it two I, people? I, don't, I do not people. remember that movie at all. <laughs> yeah, that was. You weird. don't remember Life of David Gill? I don't. I don't remember it. No. Basically, I've seen it, but. He's it's an been a ant. Long time. He's a. Uh, uh, it's a. It's a great movie. Yeah. I recommend it if you guys haven't seen it. Okay. He's an anti-death penalty activist. He goes to a party, mm-hmm. and there's a. He's a college professor, and this woman basically is like, you know, let's hook up. She says things like, you know, harder, harder, scratch me, and like tear it off about her clothes, and he does, and then she uses that against him to claim that he raped her, okay. and it was because apparently she was failing his class, and she tried to offer him, you know, sex in exchange for a good grade, and he said no. Okay. So she accuses him. His life is immediately destroyed. He's fired. Okay. He can't get hired anywhere. And then she just leaves. And so what ends up happening is the assumption is that she got scared and fled and he must be guilty. Uh, Even though there was no accusation, no no proof. No, destroyed right. his life. Mm-hmm. And so the, the long, long story short, the movie is about him. He's on death row. And he's trying to explain the story of how he ended up there and, like, you know, this other woman that he was working with, how she died. It's a really, really old movie, so I'm going to spoil a bit of it for you. But basically, it destroyed his life. Yeah. Made him extremely, I guess, suicidal. And then he ended up martyring himself for the cause to resist the death penalty. But it's, it's interesting how, man, the court of public opinion, you get, like, your, your friend probably de- deals with the ramifications of that still to this day in probably. some capacity. I mean, he, he has a wonderful family and a wonderful job now, and I'm really, really happy for him. That's good. And, uh, two years. So, I mean, but that st- still doesn't change what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, two years. That's a lot of time. And there are going to be people it's who... gone. Th- there, uh, there are people who probably would believe you if you if you went to prison for something like this and then got released yeah. after, you, you know, it was proven you were innocent. Mm-hmm. People are still going to have in the back of their minds... Yeah, exactly. The possibility. Ooh. Yeah. It's crazy that people assume if you're being arrested, you've done something wrong. Yep. That's scary. I agree. I agree. That's the world we live in now, though. Yeah. Yep. I've seen so many videos where the cops will be arresting somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, you could put on a cop uniform and just chase someone down, and they will help you. That's how scary. That's, it's, it's a con artist thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, you, you, it's the use of authority for manipulation. Mm-hmm. If, you are, if you look like a cop, you can, be, you can be having someone on the ground, and they can be screaming for help, and no one will help this person. So if, if you want, like, this is actually what criminals and con artists do. To a certain degree, hmm. they they use that view of authority. Think about that mentality people have. Scale it up to someone getting arrested, doing a perp walk, and then the news being like Adam Krigler was arrested for you know felony embezzlement. He robbed you know, and it wasn't true. Yeah. Everyone sees that on the news. They don't care. It's true as far as they're concerned. You were arrested for it. Therefore, yeah. That's why we always say we got to innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, That's wh- what's yeah, so. What happened to that? The ACLU uh, saw some some green. Betsy's trying to bring it back, man. Yep. This is the weirdest thing. You know, I've, I, there, there are certain c- cultural uh, issues related to, you know, conservatives, religious issues, mm-hmm. life and choice kind of issues, death penalty issues, things yeah. I don't agree with. But right now, when it comes to the Constitution, freedom, the economy, you've got Bill Barr challenging these states on constitutional efforts. You've got Betsy DeVos trying to bring back, you know, due process. And I'm like, these are not Rand these Paul. are good. And Rand Paul. Yeah, man. Good dude. Yeah. Good dude. Staples. So Bernie Sanders didn't show up for this vote. Yeah. What's up wow. with that? You'd think he'd be on the forefront. He could have been the one vote to to end this uh, spying abuse if he if he if he showed up. Why? Where? What's up with that? That's Bernie. That Gotta love him. Sense. I don't like any of these Bernie. people, man. Yeah. But uh, I'll individually support um, you know people I think do a great job. It's funny that people you know want me to like yell out who I'm gonna vote for. It's like, bro, I'd vote for Rand Paul in two seconds. I don't even <laughs> agree with him on a lot of issues, but he's a man of principle. Yeah. He stand he stands up for the rights of the people, and I really really respect that you know about him. He's he's always on the side of like the government shouldn't have the power to do these things. He's always he's not perfect. I'm sure there's some things I can call him out for, but I think he's a good dude. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all in the next episode.